Welcome to another Getting Started video for Octopus Deploy. This video will cover service accounts in Octopus Deploy. By the end of this video, you should have a better understanding of what is a service account in Octopus Deploy and why you'd want to use one, how to create a service account in Octopus Deploy and tie it to a team, and finally, recommendations on how to best leverage service accounts. Let's get started. This demo assumes you are familiar with creating API keys to interact with the Octopus Deploy RESTful API. If you're not familiar with that, please click on the link which just appeared in the top right corner. This demo will create a service account to be used with a build server. Click on the configuration button in the top menu to get started creating your first service account. Then click on users in the left menu. Click on the add users button in the top right corner. Give the service account a username and display name. Then click on the user is a service account checkbox. Notice that the email address and password disappear. This is because unlike regular user accounts, service accounts cannot be used to log in to Octopus Deploy via the UI. Click the Save button to create the service account. If you'd like, you can create an API key for the service account right now by clicking on the New API Key button and filling out the modal window. Please remember this is the one and only time you will see this particular API key in the clear. Once this modal window is closed, you cannot recover the key. Now we have a service account, but it doesn't have any permissions to do anything. Let's rectify that by creating a team and assigning it to it. Click on the Teams link in the left menu. Now click on the Add Team button in the top right corner. Give the team a name and description. The recommendation is to only make this team available to this specific space, but there are use cases to let it access multiple spaces. For now, leave the default selection of Accessible in this space only and click the Save button. Add the service account that was just created to the members list. Click the user roles section and then click on the include user roles button. As this is a build server, we will want to give it the build server role. However, because this is a build server, we only want to give it permissions to deploy to dev and test. Click the define scope button to limit permissions and select dev and test. The build server should still be able to see production. Give it the read only roles of project viewer and environment viewer as well. Click the Save button. Congratulations, you have just created your first service account and associated it with a team. That service account can now be used by your build server to interact with Octopus Deploy. Here are some tips to keep in mind when creating service accounts in Octopus Deploy. Create a unique service account per use case. For example, if you have two build servers, Jenkins and Team City, create two service accounts. Create a unique set of service accounts per space or logical grouping. Don't have a single build server service account used across all spaces. Follow the principle of least privilege. It is common to see a service account's API keys shared with more than one team member or a person in a company. Limit what a service account can and can't do. Be especially careful around any permissions which modify data. Links to additional resources, as well as links to contact support, can be found in the description below. Thank you for watching and happy deployments!